and welcome to the Ashland Knits podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from Minnesota. It's been a while since my last podcast. I've been very, very busy. Um, I'm just finishing a streak of 11 days in a row of working, so I'm really excited to get back here and show you a little bit of what I've been knitting on. I've noticed I have a few new viewers, so just to reintroduce myself again, my name is Ashley. I live in Minnesota where I am in my last year of training as a fellow doctor. Um, I live here with my husband and my little 14 month old daughter Elise and we have a little Shih Tzu toy poodle named Ollie who I'm sure will make an appearance later today. I have been knitting since I was about 10 years old on and off and then I really got into it about six years ago and now it has definitely become my hobby of passion and a part of life. So I'm very excited to be doing this podcast. Thank you again for those who are tuning in. Um, like I said, I've been very busy the past few weeks. I've been taking a bunch of call and studying for my oral board exam, which is coming up in May. So I haven't done as much knitting as I would like to, but um, I've got some plans ahead. So I'm excited for this video because I know it's going to kind of boost my mojo. Right now it's like 65 degrees outside, which is almost unheard of in Minnesota in the beginning of <laughs> April, but we've been enjoying it. We've been getting outside a bunch and it's going to make me want to knit everything spring. So I have a bunch to show you today of kind of my plans for the next few months. So let's get started. So first, what I am wearing is the Tania by Caitlin Hunter. I am sitting on my floor again. Like I said in past videos, I don't really have a good spot to do this. But this is just a little t-shirt bottom up design. I think I knit this about six years ago. Um, it was very, very fast to knit. I used a Madeline Tosh sock that was already in my stash. So it's a little bit more rough but the nice thing is is I don't have to worry about it pilling too much or requiring uh, too uh, often of a soak. The yarn color I don't remember but it's a fingering weight yarn. I think I knit it on a US 4 size needle and then you can see that the color is variegated. Now I didn't do alternating striping with it so there's definitely some pooling in the shirt. I made it cropped because I like wearing my shirt just below um, or just above where my high-waisted pants usually sit on me just because I think that looks nicer. And then um, I think I knit a size small for it. I kind of wish that I had done a little bit larger size because my arms are a little bit tight here, um, but it works just fine. I wear it too often I would say but it's definitely the shirt that I pull out on St. Patrick's Day because I think it's the only green that I have. Um, I really do like it like I said the the pattern was really really straightforward it was fun lace to do and I think everybody who's a knitter knows Caitlin Hunter and has maybe knit the Tanya so I was just following the trend at that time. It does bunch a little bit in the armpit which I find a lot of the time when you knit kind of a bottom up construction it's got a drop sleeve um, which is not uncommon with this type, but yeah, overall it was a fun knit and I'm happy that I have it and that it's warm enough today to wear it. Um, so that's, that's what I'm wearing. I have no finished objects to show. I've, um, been kind of in the mood for just stockinette, something that I don't really have to think about. So I've been actually knitting on socks. So I do have an almost FO, a 95% FO. I just need to do the afterthought heel on, but I am knitting striped socks um, with an earth yarn, uh, self-striping yarn. The cuff, heel, and toe are knitted in this uh, Stellina pink that's a variegated pink from um, Knit Crate that I got a few years ago. And overall, I just knit, 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 and then just continued to knit, put a little um, waste piece of yarn where I wanted the heel, and then finish the toe. So I did this uh, from the cuff down, and then its partner is almost done. I just have to put in the afterthought heel. Um, this was fun because 
I just kind of started at the beginning of the ball and saw where it got me. It's kind of nice because there's the fade within the stripes and it goes into a different color. I didn't realize that this was probably going to be pink and red, which was different, um, but you can see that the color toe that I selected blends in pretty well. And then when I um, was thinking about knitting the second sock, I really tried to match it up, but you can see on this one, let's see, compared to this, I was a few stripes. <laughs> um, longer than I needed to. I should have probably pulled out a few more stripes. I thought I didn't realize that I was going to be off, but whatever. They're socks and at least they match pretty well and I do like the colors. So today my hope is that I put the afterthought heel in and then I can just say that these are off my needles, block them, and then wear them at night. And then so looking at the yarn ball that I've been using for this. This is what's left of it. Um, you can see, if you can, that there's yellow and orange in there as well. And so what I did was when I got to the end of the pink or at the toe of this sock, there was orange and yellow starting and I didn't want to put the orange and yellow into the next sock because I wanted those two to match. So what I did was made a shorty from the space in between so I basically actually did now a toe up sock, started with the toe and then made, used the stripes back up so that I was still using that color and then kind of past where this goes, it turns back into a blue and green stripe is which where I then started the second stripe sock. So I'm getting my bang for my buck out of this uh, yarn skein. I used a navy for the toe, the heel, and the cuff on this. This was the navy tough sock that I used from uh, La Vienna May, which is what I had used in my newspaper sweater, which is what I'm wearing in the first episode of my podcast. And so it was nice. I think that this is a really nice color. It's a nice firm sock. I know that my heel is going to be very uh, sturdy. And so I'm excited. So I'm going to finish the afterthought heel on the long sock and then finish this. And then I'll have two socks um, off the needles, which will be great because I've been kind of mostly knitting on these socks for the past couple weeks because I just kind of come home and needed to unwind and not think too much. So those are my almost FO and HO. I have two whips that I'm currently working on. The first one is one that I talked about in the prior podcast. It is the sweater number nine from My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is a sweater that I am knitting for my mom. Um, it's a bulky weight sweater. It's got kind of a high neck. You knit it top down with raglan increases with a little bit of uh, design change here at the increase. And then you just knit the body and knit the sleeve separately, basically in stock and that until you get to the leg that you want. Uh, there's not too much shaping involved. Last time I talked about this on my podcast, I was quite concerned about, I had just divided for the body and sleeves in the last one. And you can see I've gotten a little bit done here, maybe about eight more inches. Um, I've been knitting on this because it's all stock and knit. I've been knitting on this when I am doing practice oral board exams by myself because I don't have to think about it. And I can just, I guess I'm kind of a sight to see. I'm knitting, Ollie's usually in my lap and I'm talking out loud about different anesthesia um, uh, critical situations. And my husband's always like, are you talking to me? I'm like, no, I'm just talking out loud to myself. But it's a nice project to kind of use my hands with but not have to think. And that way I don't have to be like, oh, one more round, one more round. It's just something that I pick up when I'm studying. Um, so anyways, when I did my last podcast, I was quite concerned about the fact that the stockinette might look a little uneven because there were times when I was knitting this and I wasn't paying attention to my tension. I'm a continental knitter. And so I was knitting really quickly. And what happens is if you knit really fast you're, if you're, and you're not pushing up the stitches, as quickly as you should onto your needles, then you start to get bigger and bigger stitches until you push back all of the stitches back up to the tip of your needles and then the tension will tighten again. 
So there was parts in here, oh goodness, my hair is on everything. Um, so there was parts in here where that looked like that. And so what I actually did after I made my last podcast was I blocked it. I wet blocked the part that I had done and it really, really softened up this top part. Um, you can see is this laying really nicely in comparison to kind of, this is where I think the blocking kind of stopped. And then you can see the difference uh, that blocking makes with stockinette. So I was really happy with the way that it blocked out. I did have to kind of go in with a darning needle and kind of pick through the stitches and uh, tighten them back up. So there are some spots on the back where there might be a little bit of a pulled thread to make a little bit more tension. But ultimately, I think that my mom will like this. Um, I am knitting a size large based on her measurements um, because she wants it to be oversized. However, I am knitting this in a single weight, bulky weight yarn. And let me see if I have the tag for it. I am using Vintage Chunky by Barocco. And like I said, it's a bulky weight, 52% acrylic, 40% wool and 8% nylon. And the sweater number nine calls for two strands, a worsted weight and then a strand of mohair, which usually equates to about a bulky. So what I did was I just went up to a bulky, checked my gauge. My gauge, I dropped, I well, I redact that. I got gauge on the recommended needle size that she uses for the pattern with my yarn that I have currently. Um, but my mom really wants something that the stitch pattern looks really nice, tight and uniform, like it's a machine knit. So what I did was I went down a needle size. I talked about this in my second podcast as well. And then um, decided that now my gauge is gonna be a little bit tighter than the recommended. And so she's gonna get a size between a large and a medium, which will probably fit her better. So I am knitting this on a US 10, so a six millimeter needle. I've said before, I don't really knit with this big of a needle before, so it's definitely be a change in my hands, but it moves quite quickly and I'm quite happy with this. Of course, this probably won't be done until summer and she won't wear it anyways until probably around December, uh, but whatever, it'll be fine. And I think it's turning out really pretty and it's a really good, you know, mindless knit that I can do while I'm studying. So I guess if you see next time that this is almost done, that means I've been studying a lot. And if it's not almost done, then you know that I've been procrastinating on studying. So that'll be an easy way to tell if I've been good at doing what I've hoped and intended to do and actually get prepared for this exam at the end of May. So that's one of my whips. The other whip is another one I talked about on my last podcast as well. And it is the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. Um, I said in my last podcast, Andrea Mowry is doing a March to May make along where you can make any of her, I think it has to be a sweater or a cardigan, um, but any of her patterns and you can submit and she's got really cool prizes on Ravelry that you can possibly win. Um, so I thought, you know, I had the rose cardigan already started. It was one of my hibernating whips in my um, basement. And so I picked it back up. Last time I was doing this, I was just working on the first panel. I have now finished the first quadrant of the sweater um, and blocked it. So that's exciting. I think last time I, I showed you this, I had probably about to here done. And then I knit this rest of this bit um, the rest of the way. And here's some of the neck shaping. So I think this is one of the back quadrants. It's got a really cute, simple, single twist cable down the side. And it's a very easy pattern to follow. She's got really nice charts to make it pretty um, mindless as long as you just follow your count. I used mohair and a single color. She does a fade for hers. And I love the way that it looks. So the colors are two different tones and I'll show you them in a second, but they marled together and it looks very, very pretty. Um, so this is one of the panels and I started the next one and I'm not too far on it. But again, you can see, I love looking at the difference of a blocked piece versus a uh, non-blocked piece. I mean, you can see how it opens up, it bloomed, and it's just so drapey and soft, and it's much softer than this one right now. And it almost feels like 
silk in my hand. So that's, that's really exciting. Um, so I'm working on the second panel now, and then I have two more <laughs> quadrants to do, and then I have to do the ribbing, the cuffs, and the big uh, collar. So am I gonna get this done by the end of May? Probably not, but I can try. Um, but it's a really fun knit to do. I'm hoping that once I'm done with these socks, this is gonna become my you know, main project and then I can get it done before I start my other spring knits that I am jonesing to do, but we'll see. Um, like I said, it's a really easy knit. I'm knitting them on very small needles and that's what I got gauge on. This one doesn't show me. I think it's a US 2, so it's a 2.75 needle. So you can imagine how long it's taking me, but this is more of a process knit versus a end product knit, which I mean, it's both to me, but I'm just enjoying the feeling of everything in my hands. And for this, I'm using a ball of Southampton Valley Yarns, Southampton, 72% killed mohair, 28% mulberry silk. And this is kind of a rougher, cheaper mohair, but honestly, when I washed it and blocked it, it's become very, very soft. Um, it's actually pretty soft already, but it's, it's now very, very soft. And then I'm using, um, for the other ball, uh, Camello Merino, which is a, has some camel in it. As you can see, they're very different colors, but it makes a really, really pretty marl, and I'm very excited for this. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the other one. So I'm happy at least I got one quadrant done. Doesn't seem like I did much, but I think in the last video too, episode two, I told you <laughs> that it's probably, I'm gonna be very excited about what looks like very little progress, but to me, it's a lot of progress because it is a lot of knitting because I'm doing it on 2.75 millimeter needles. Okay, so those are my two whips. Nothing new has been casted on besides the socks, which are already cast off. Um, I've just, like I said, been kind of busy, so I've been keeping myself occupied with simple things that I know that I can just do while I'm knitting or while I'm watching TV or just trying to rewind for the last 30 minutes of the day or while I am studying. But I have a lot of exciting plans. So like I said, the weather is really warmed up. Um, we had a wonderful Easter. Daughter got to do a little Easter egg hunt, which basically entailed us throwing eggs in front of her, <laughs> like plastic ones, and watching her pick up. We threw five in front of her, she found three of them. So I'd say that she is an egg hunt master, but it was a lot of fun. So anyways, it's just been so nice out. I went on a run yesterday and everything's been getting so pretty that I've been just really interested in spring knits. My birthday is coming up at the end of April and I was talking to my mom and I said, you know what, I just, I'm really trying not to buy myself yarn this year, but I think a way to get around that is to have other people buy me yarn. It doesn't count if it's a present, right? Uh, so anyways, she said that she'd get me some yarn for a sweater. I, on my last podcast, had talked about this sweater um, by Sandus Garn. Uh, it's called, an pardon my inability to pronounce this, but Vidal Demkofti. And it's a really pretty all over color work. I think it's uh, steak, um, very spring colors, which is what drew it, me to it. And in my last podcast, I was telling you that I was craving color work. I need something to keep my mind a little bit busier. And so I've had some ideas in mind of what I wanna knit and I'm going to knit that, but I'm like, okay, I have more knits now that I wanna do that are more springtime. So this was one of them. I knew this and then I, for some reason, must have just forgotten it. Um, but I didn't, I forgot that if you wanted to do a Sandus Garn pattern, you have to buy the kit with it. You have to buy yarn to make a sweater's worth um, or a sweater's worth of yarn to be able to purchase the pattern. And they do not sell, or at least I couldn't find that they sold this pattern in the US. And or this yarn kit with it. Um, so I had to forgo that dream. At some point, maybe I'll see if I can find it somewhere. Um, but right now, uh, I'm just gonna have to say, 
on to the next. So what I thought of instead of doing that one, because again, I still really want a color work sweater, is the Merit sweater by Kristen Drysdale. It was in the Lina Magazine issue seven, which, oh, I actually have right here, um, which comes in this one. I loved almost every single pattern in this Lina Magazine. And so this was one that I actually purchased because I can use all of them. So now this works out because I forgot <laughs> that I had this pattern in here. So now I don't have to buy it. Um, which I was 100% going to do. So anyways, it is a two strand color work, or I guess not, but it's an alternating color work um, pattern just all over. It's a cardigan. Let me see if I can find a better picture of what the front looks like. Here we go. It's a cardigan that you steek and then put buttons on and it has a very nice button band. So Obviously this is a very winter one, but what I'm thinking I'm gonna do and what I had my mom get for me was I got made her get her, me some Knit Picks um, palette. And the dark brown color is going to be um, kind of like a spring green. And then the blue in this is going to be a um, light, I guess brown, like a light chocolate, at least I'm hoping, based on what it looks like on the website. And then the uh, background color is gonna be a cream. So I'm hoping it's gonna look a little bit more spring and, but still be able to kind of pull into fall. I was thinking at first that I wanted to do like bright pink uh, and like orange. And then I thought to myself, I'm probably not gonna wear that very much just because it's hot in the summer. Am I gonna wear wool in the summer? Probably not. You know, Minnesota gets chilly at night, but how often am I up past 9 p.m.? Very rarely. So I think that it'll be just better for me to get something that I can wear more full uh, all season versus that. So that's going to be one that I'm hoping to get. My mom and my dad are coming up to visit. I like to say they're coming up to visit me, but I 100% know they're coming up to visit my daughter. <laughs> but they're coming up soon. They're going to be here for my birthday, which I'm quite excited for. And I think, yeah, that I maybe she'll come with yarn, which will be even more exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm thinking that what I'll do is I'm hoping I'll be good. I'll cast off, uh, finish the rose cardigan and then start the sweater, but we'll see. I'll probably end up casting this on as well. And then basically probably knit this whole sweater before I finish the rose cardigan, because that's, that's my problem. I do that every time. All right. And so then, like I said, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of more spring cardigans still thinking what kind of color work cardigans I can do. And I was looking at one of the websites that you can in the US get Sandiskarn patterns in yarn. Um, and I saw this cardigan. You can see the name up at the top, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I will botch it and I will feel very bad about it if I get it wrong. So this is an all over color work. It's got little flowers. I think in English it means like a flower cardigan, um, but it's beautiful. I was just like, this looks like me. This is what I would wear this outfit uh, tomorrow if I could. So I think I actually do have this outfit. So I really love the yellow. They call it like a corn color yellow. Um, and then it's mostly just kind of a light cream as the back color. Obviously it's all just the same pattern. So I'm sure it'll be pretty easy for me to memorize and it should go pretty quick. But again, I think it's a steaked pattern and I am probably going to see if my husband will buy this for me. Um, so I just have to find the right colors. I'm thinking that I want to do the yellow, but at the same time, I've been kind of craving pink, which is not my normal. I, I don't knit with a lot of pink, even though I have probably, well, I guess there's more purple back here, but I do have a lot of pink colored yarn. But I know that if I got pink, again, like I said with the last one, that I probably wouldn't wear it as much as I would imagine I would. I think that this yellow in here is really pretty and I'm hoping I can find something that's similar to it. 
I have a lot of yellow in my stash, but it's not the right yellow. I want something more like a, anyway, could you even say like a dirty yellow? Dusty yellow? That's what I would, if that's a, if that's a color, um, not a mustard, like a dusty yellow, um, I would hope to do that and then even maybe tone down a brighter yellow with a bit of a cream to beige background color so that it mutes it a little bit, makes it more mute, uh, muted and go with that. So we'll see. I think my, my husband said that that would be something he'd buy me for my birthday. So I'm going to get two sweater quantities worth of yarn, which I hope to show in the next video. But I said I was going to try to stash bust this year and I clearly am not doing that. I, I am, but one ball goes out and now 10 more balls are going to come into my stash. So it's, it's slow progress and I don't think you can even count it as progress, but at least I'm trying and I'm not personally buying the yarn. So like I said before, I feel like that's a win, right? That doesn't count. Yarn that people buy you doesn't count for increasing your stash. I don't think so. Um, besides, you can't like not accept a gift of yarn, right? So um, those are, yeah, those are the two cardigans that I'm hoping to make um, in the next couple months. We'll see. Um, I'm probably going to get a lot less busy, especially after my board exam is done in May. Then we're going to have to think of moving and all of that, but my nights will open up again instead of studying a bunch. And I've, like I said, I've been on call pretty much out of the last five weekends, I've been on call four out of five. So this is like one of my first weekends off and then I'm on call again next weekend. So those weekend days that I usually sit with my daughter while she plays and I knit haven't happened. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm a little bit behind the eight ball. I'm not, I'm kind of anxious about the fact that I haven't knit as much, um, which I think is silly, but that's just kind of me. I'm such a task and goal oriented person that it's hard for me to kind of say, no, this is just for pleasure. You don't have to worry about reaching a certain benchmark. So I'm not putting weight on myself to finish the rose cardigan by the end of May. I'm just proud of myself that, hey, I've got one quadrant off the needles. Maybe I'll have two and I will have half a sweater and I can just keep one side of my body warm. Um, but anyway, so those are the knits for me. Um, now I also have had a lot of friends and my sister and my sister-in-law are pregnant. Um, I am not pregnant, but I have, I think I know personally six people who are due within the fall of this year. And out of those six people, four of them are having boys and the other two don't know what they're having yet. So I don't know what's in the water, but boys must be the, the theme this year. But anyway, um, I was kind of thinking of what baby knits can I do? I, I, I talked before that it's really hard for me to knit for other people because again, I'm very busy and I get very anxious if I'm not completing tasks, but I have yarn to make a baby blanket and yarn to make a baby cardigan in my stash that I've already started and haven't finished. Um, so I said, you know what, this is a great way to stash bust and this way I can give um, something special to the people that I love. So the first thing that I'm show, my sister, like I said, is having a boy. Um, and so I have the yarn in my stash to make the tonal blanket by Pearl Soho. Um, it is basically a slip stitch pattern. I'll kind of scroll through, um, a slip stitch pattern all the way up and down that you meld like five colors together. So when the white is on the front, the lighter color, it makes it very muted. And then on the back, it's going to be a little bit more contrasty because you're slipping. Um, these are the kits. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm sitting by the window just to get some more vitamin D, but these are the kits that it comes with. This is the one that I really wanted. They were out of this kit and a little out of my price range. I think also too, the yarn that they recommended was non superwash. I could be wrong. Um, yep, it's 100% baby alpaca. So I would assume you can't wash it in the washing machine and dry it. And so I didn't want that for a baby blanket 
knowing how messy my baby is um, and assuming that she's not <laughs> an outlier for being as messy as she is, I had a feeling that if you have a baby blanket, you're going to get spit up on it. You're going to get all sorts of things on it. So it has to be super wash. Um, this is kind of a swatch that they did of it. You can see a little bit better. It's just a slip stitch pattern. Um, I don't know if there's a term for this type of stitch, but anyways, it's a slip stitch pattern. So what I did was I bought the yarn a couple years ago. Everything is falling apart. Um, so I bought the yarn a couple years ago and then just ended up, like I said, I'm sometimes just don't have time to do this. And so I ended up giving up and not gifting this to the person that I originally wanted to gift it to. I know, not perfect. Um, but basically, I bought colors that are basically the colors that are in the one in Pearl Soho's blanket. And then this is the white. And I have a bunch of these downstairs. Um, the main, I, I couldn't find a green in this ball of yarn. So I bought a separate one. But this is a Fibra Natura. It's a natural fine hand dyed or hand knitting yarns. And it's called Domina. Um, which is fine Italian style merino. So it's 100% extra fine merino super wash. So this can go in the wash machine and the dryer. So I'm hopefully going to tell them don't dry it, but at least I can use this. And then this one as well is a one that you can do super wash merino as well. Um, these are all sport weight yarns. So I think this will knit up well. I had started it. Uh, where did that one yarn ball go? Here it is. I started it with this one and I ended up ripping it out because it got tangled in another baby blanket that I was making. Um, and so I had to cut out the part that I did and instead of keeping it because I was like, oh, I'm not going to make a blanket with this. I'm going to change my mind. I threw it away. So I'm hoping I have enough of this color um, to make it even and make it look good. But now that my sister is having a baby and it's a boy, I said, you know what? This is somebody I can knit this for. And so I'm going to do it because my other sister has had two kids. I knit her first baby, her daughter, a blanket, and then her son, a little giraffe uh, by uh, Susan B. Anderson. And so I said, this will be great. I have boy colors. I have a baby blanket. I have everything I need for this. So I am going to start working on that. So that's going to be kind of my long-term project. I'm also going to start for her and hopefully have done by the time the little boy comes. So that's going to be one thing that I'm going to do. Um, and I don't think she's going to watch this podcast so we can talk about this as we go. Um, and it'll be a quick knit. It's just, I have to do it. I think it's going to be one of those ones that I just, have to do all I'm studying or watching TV, listening to a podcast and not really having to think about it. And then the other one that I had in my stash, because my best friend is having a baby and she is having a boy. And I'm very excited because they got married back in, I guess, September. And I remember like the first day that they were married, she was like, yeah, I just want to get married so I can start having babies. <laughs> And so I'm excited for her because she's going to have a baby and it's a boy and they live in uh, Colorado. They love hiking, all that. So I think it's going to be awesome for them that they're going to have a boy as well. But um, what I was thinking of doing, which now I'm looking at it more and this looks like it's for a girl, but I don't think that this will matter. I think we're going to do it for a boy anyways, because I think it'll look cute. Um, we're going to, I was going to make, and I have it in my stash and I've already started it the Sardar round neck jacket, um, which is this cute little thing. It, there's also one that comes with a hood and the one pattern that I have, which I can't find, I have to find where it's downloaded, um, is the one with the hood. Uh, so I think it'll look really cute for an infant. Um, I'm making, I think the three month age, which now that I've had a baby, when I was starting this, I was making it, um, without ever having a kid before. So I was like, do I do newborn or do I do the three month? And now I'm like, oh, I absolutely should do the three month because babies are newborns for so short amount of time. 
and usually they're living in a onesie and nothing else. Um, so it'd be kind of not worth it. But you can see it's this really pretty yarn, which is really what drew me to this pattern. I think Webs sometimes sends uh, catalogs and this was in there and I was like, this is so cute. It's knit in pieces, um, knit flat, and then you sew it together. And so I had started making it for my other, one of my other best friends. Um, and I got the yarn here. The yarn is called Snuggly Bunny by Sadar. This one is in the color, what is it? Oh, it doesn't say the color here, but it's shade 0311. And it's just a very, very soft, fun, almost novelty yarn. That's two strands, but you can see here, it's just this really fun, very, 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 very soft yarn. Um, and it knits up to look like this, just like a fabric. So it's really pretty. I have already made the back of this. Um, and then I made one of the sides, the front pieces. And I started on the second front piece and I messed up. And when I messed up, I just, for some reason, threw it down and said, I'm not picking this back up. And so I have a whole back, a side, half a side that probably needs to get ripped out and redone, and then two sleeves to do and a hood and I am done. That would take me probably a day to two days to do. And I, in my stubbornness, has just decided to forgo doing it. So I'm gonna pick this up again and I'm gonna finish this and I'm gonna give this to my best friend. And again, I think, I think it's a, maybe a little girly, but I think it's gonna look really cute. I, her next baby will maybe make this again, but maybe make one that's kind of all um, connected together, knit in one piece versus pieces, because I find that knitting in pieces is more cumbersome to me, um, even though it's easier kind of to take along with you because the project doesn't grow as big. But I just, I like the, process of knitting it all kind of together. Um, but this yarn, I can't say better things about it. It's so soft. It's obviously machine washable and it's going to be really soft against an infant skin. So yeah, I think she'll like this. Um, and I'm looking forward to making it and getting out, out of my stash and out of my hair. So that'll be fun. I have two stash busting projects that I wouldn't have used until all of these people started having babies. Um, and the others, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll see, I don't know. I don't wanna say they're not knit worthy, but it's a lot to do. I might make maybe some little giraffes because I've made a couple of those before, but they shouldn't take it personally if I don't knit them something because I didn't knit my daughter anything. I did knit her one blanket, um, but I finished it after she was already born and already like, seven months old. So like I said, I hope nobody takes it personally if I don't finish a project for them because clearly I'm not even finishing it for my own daughter. Um, so that's just how it goes. And hopefully when I get a little bit more normal with schedule, I can be a little bit more um, able to stick to plans that I originally have. I have the best intentions, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Okay, so those are kind of the plans that I have. This is a shorter episode than the last two just because I just didn't get to knit as much as I'd like. Um, I'm hoping next time I'm going to have a new, well, I, I said I wasn't going to cast on a sweater, but I probably will cast on the one that my mom's going to get me or the one that Nick is, my husband's going to get me. Um, and then maybe I'll also have the blanket cast on too. So a few more things to do besides this. I've just been really trying to get these socks done and out of my hair and on my feet so that I can feel accomplished. Um, but yeah, so I thought that because this would be a shorter episode today would be a really good day to kind of talk about my knitting journey and how I got into knitting. Um, it's one of my favorite subjects. I love hearing people's um, journey to knitting and I thought that I would share mine. So if you're interested in this, then buckle up. <laughs> And if you're not, thank you so much for watching. I will see you uh, probably in two weeks time. Um, hopefully not nearly as long as this one took me to get to because life is gonna open up a little bit more for me. 
but thank you again and I hope you enjoy the weather. With those who are interested, um, yeah, this is my knitting journey. So I grew up in a household of people who didn't knit. I ended up when I was about 10 years old um, being friends with a girl and I went over to her house and she was knitting. She had knitting needles, she had yarn and I've always been someone who was interested in crafts and you know drawing and painting and those little bracelets that you could make uh, but I had never heard of knitting before and so I was like what in the world are you doing and she told me what it was and she kind of showed me it and she was saying that her mom knits and that her mom makes sweaters and all this stuff and she's just like it's so impressive but I thought it was so cool and I got home from that play date and went up to my mom and I said mom you just can't believe what I just saw it was the coolest thing ever and she's like what is it and then I said knitting and she started laughing she was like knitting and she's like I was expecting you to say maybe something else but good it was great and she, I was like oh mom I have to learn I have to do it and so she was so sweet she took me that day to Hobby Lobby and we went into the yarn section and we found this little book and I wish I still had this book I don't know where it went but it was basically a book and it came with a little um skein of rainbow yarn and two yellow plastic knitting needles and it was a teach you how to knit and so I got it home, I opened it up, and I learned how to very basic slip knot cast on and how to just knit. And then I closed that book up and I didn't read anything more. And I just started knitting, uh, knitting, um, what am I trying to say? Garter stitch back and forth. And that's all I did. And so that was the height of novelty yarns. And so I was using like eyelash yarn and the big boucle kind of type yarns and was just knitting garter stitch uh, scarves. That's all I did. And my tension was horrible. There'd be scarves that, you know, would kind of go like this instead of up and down. There'd be a huge dropped open part here that somehow I picked back up and, you know, some stitch would be missing in the whole thing. and. So for the next probably, I'd say like five years, my poor family had to endure getting a scarf from me every single Christmas. And every single scarf that I would make would always be too short because I would get bored of making it before, <laughs> before it was actually finished. And so all of their scarves would be kind of sitting like above their belly buttons and they would have to wear them around. And I was so proud of them. But that's all I thought that you could do with knitting. I literally thought all you could do was a garter stitch and make scarves. Or I tried to make a blanket once where I knit a bunch of scarves and tried to sew them together. So I had no idea that there was anything else to do. And so I kind of burned myself out of that. Um, I had gotten good attention at the time that I was finished, but I just said, you know what, there's nothing else I can do. Then in college, I had a roommate um, that I walked in one day and she was knitting and she was knitting a blanket and I saw it was like it was very interesting I saw that there were like textures to it I was like well that doesn't really look like knitting I said what are you doing and she's like I'm knitting I was like oh my gosh that's amazing like she had this little landscape um, knitted onto her fabric and I was like I just don't understand how you're doing that and she goes it's all knit and purl stitches and I was like what the hell is a purl stitch? And so I ran into my bedroom. I started Googling it. I went down a massive rabbit hole. I realized that you could make all sorts of stuff and that there were circular needles that you could make sweaters, that you could make hats, that you could make circular scarves, that you could, you know, do knit and purl and cable. And so it just was a treasure trove to me. And so I went out to my local um, Michaels, got a bunch of yarn and started knitting in the round circular scarves, hats, and got really into cables. I didn't know what gauge was, I didn't know what yarn was right for what, but I got really into it and did that for a while. I knit my sisters and my mom some stuff and I was kind of figuring it out on my own, but again, not really understanding what to do. And then, um, I got really in, in, interested in the Pearl Soho website, uh, which I think is a very awesome website because there's just so many free patterns. Their stuff is so beautiful. 
And so I always thought it was such an amazing looking um, thing. And I was still knitting stuff at that time, but again, not really looking into garments. I thought that the garment was just way past what I would be able to ever accomplish. And so my last year of medical school, like I said, I'm kind of, I was still knitting blankets during this time, scarves, stuff like that, uh, but never anything super intricate. But my last year of medical school, we have to do residency interviews. And so we ended up going to New York City for a couple, uh, mostly just to kind of see the city because I'd never been there before. And I happened to be looking for a place to eat. And on my Google Maps was a little note for Pearl Soho. I was just down the block. And I was like, oh my gosh, to my hus now husband, I was like, there's Pearl Soho here. I look at that all the time online. Can we please, please go? And so we went and that's what jump-started everything that I do now. I walked in there. I had never been in a yarn shop before. I didn't even know that there were such things as yarn shops. I thought all you could do was buy your yarn from a commercial yarn place um, or online. And it was so beautiful. Everything was so beautiful. It was so clean. If you've not been to Pearl Soho, I just strongly recommend it. It's a, it's a tiny, nice kind of uh, really cute yarn shop. And so I bought a yarn kit from there, which was the uh, shiny and matte wrap. Um, I took it home. I cherished it. I was so scared to do it. And then I started to learn about gauge tension and I started knitting it um, English style where you throw which is how I learned to knit. And it was taking me forever because I never used this small of a needle before. I was trying to keep gauge. And so at that time, it's when I taught myself how to switch over to continental knitting. And that was a huge um, change for me because it's a big t change in tension and how you hold the yarn and how you hold the needles. And so that was a bit of a learning curve for me, but now all I do is knit continental. And then from there, I decided to be brave. I knit my first sweater um, about six years ago, and then it's just snowballed from there. And then all of a sudden my stash just exploded. And I realized at some point that you can only knit so many things at once. And yeah, it's become a part of my life. I will say I've taken time off from it. There's been, you know, I think there was maybe almost a year hiatus that I dropped knitting for a bit or I'd pick it up for maybe a day or two and then put it back down and you know it, it just kind of goes with the flow of things for me but I've really realized how much joy it brings and it's just it's so fun to get to wear stuff that you make and I'm looking forward to being able to pass this on to my children because I think that it's a great great hobby to learn I really do think that it's helped my dexterity especially with procedures. Um, and yeah, I can't say anything better about it, but it's been, it's been a journey. It's been one that's been long. My poor mom has had to endure all of these scarves. That's why I want to make her a nice sweater. Um, and now I'm looking more at, like I said, in other podcasts to make a lot more advanced knitting things now, because I feel like I can do the basics very well. Um, and I can do moderate to intermediate, moderate, intermediate, uh, patterns and some advanced but I really want to get better at making sure that I can knit at almost like an expert level and tailor things well and and really make sure that everything looks very very well done versus trying to rush through it and uh, miss mistakes or make mistakes so yeah that's my knitting story I if you have any knitting stories of your own that you'd like to share please comment below or any other thoughts because I think it's just so interesting to hear how people get to it. It's so amazing to hear those that have had been doing this for, you know, so long and their mom and their grandma taught them. Um, and it's just such a blessing that I got to where I am today because of somebody that I was hanging out with and that she happened to be knitting. And it's, it's opened up my world and it's such a wonderful hobby to have. And I, yeah, I hope that everybody gets to do it and gets to enjoy something as much as I enjoy knitting, even if I, it's not knitting, it's something else. If you're probably watching this podcast, then you probably like to knit, but I hope that everybody finds the joy in something out there besides work that they can do that makes them happy. But yeah, 
uh, that's all I have to say today. Uh, thank you. If you've watched all the way to the end, I appreciate it. And for those who have subscribed and liked, thank you even more. It makes me motivated to make more podcasts. Otherwise, I'm like, oh, people don't like it very much. But this is probably one of my favorite things to get to do. I love being able to share and please reach out to me. It makes my day to kind of pull away from medicine and get to talk to you all. So I really appreciate those who have been here before and I, I really look forward to doing more of these and I will have more to show next time. So enjoy the spring. I hope that you guys have a lovely weekend and I will see you in a couple weeks.